Tab Nation, it's your boy Tom, and you all seem to really like macro recorders. That's uh, pretty much my top three videos every single day. But you guys should subscribe because so many of you come here just to watch that one video and then can't get them to work because you don't know anything about how coding works. So definitely subscribe. Throwing one, two videos out every week on automation. So I've done videos on like pullovers, macro recorder, for example, about image search, pixel search, OCR. We're going to be doing it in this program, Macro Win, which you all seem to really enjoy. It's very user friendly uh, compared to pullovers. Pullovers is great, but it's more you need at least somewhat of a coding background to truly understand what's going on. Where here you don't need one as much. So that's what we're going to be talking about is those. So we're going to start a new one, which is right up right here. I always forget the image is backwards when I'm recording. Hit the little plus symbol. Uh, one thing I want to point out real quick, and uh, I, I screw this up sometimes, you have to be logged in or you can make macros all you want but they will not trigger unless you are logged into this program. So just an FYI, sometimes I don't realize I'm logged out and I'm like, why is my macro not working? And something as simple as that. So definitely do that. So we're going to name it. Um, I mean, I don't really care. I'm going to delete this after the video. So we're just going to call it test one description. This is for YouTube application association. I don't really care. Um, so we're going to use our trigger. We're going to do keyboard, which defaults to, I think, or at least that's the last one I used. And we're going to push the plus symbol here. I'm going to press F2 on my keyboard, which will assign it, as you can see there. Uh, just a heads up, do not use F1. I know if you watched most of my videos, I do use F1, just because I like to keep it universal in my videos. But you can't override F1 in this program. Um, if you push it, it just opens your browser to the help section of the website. Uh, so you can't use that. Um, so I'm just going to switch over to F2. We want it to trigger on the actual press. So when it goes down, you could choose up. That basically means if you hold F2, it's not going to trigger until you actually let go. And there could be reasons why you want to do that, especially in like video games. You're getting ready uh, or whatever. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and push OK. I'm not going to go too deep into that. We got our conditions, but we're going to skip over that just for a second. So if our conditions are met in image search, pixel search, OCR, we want to know that it works. So we're just going to keep it simple and we're going to use a uh, message box, which you can find under notification right here. Go ahead, push add. Our third tab right here. So there's different options, but we're just going to keep it simple with message box title. Uh, we'll just call it found. And for the text that it's going to display, I found it and you can choose you know what kind of notification is we'll do hand why not doesn't really matter <laughs> for the video so our conditions that's where the fun stuff starts we're going to click the plus symbol and in our drop down we're looking for um, image detection so it's image search same thing we're going to go ahead and click that so we're going to click that and we're going to click add and we're going to get this so for my image i'm going to be looking for this image on my screen it's just my logo from my site i have this saved on my desktop so all you got to do is drag and drop into the image field and there it goes now you can search by application but for the most part i think everybody's going to be searching by area you can manually put all these options in i don't recommend that because that's a pain in the butt to do so we're just going to um, use this little uh, crosshair thing here, and that's going to let us highlight the screen. Now, as you see, that just disappeared, so I need to bring that back. There we go. Oh, wrong thing. Where did the image go? Okay, let's uh, do this a little differently here. All right, so I am actually going to close that and move this whole thing over just so we have this uh, available here. So let's, uh, didn't line this up very well, did I? <laughs> That's fine. All right, let's re-put that in. Yeah. 
Bear with me for a second and make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm throwing in the one, two videos out every week on just automation in general, usually an auto hotkey, but I do like to branch out from time to time, as like in this video. And hit that like because it lets me know which videos you like. If you guys have ideas on what else you want to see in this program, let me know in the comments below. That way I have some ideas on exactly what you guys are looking for. Because there's hundreds of options in this uh, program. It's uh, crazy how much uh, you can go through. As you can see here, there's just so much stuff. Even I'm like overwhelmed sometimes, but it's great to have all those options. So yeah, image detection. Back to that. So we're going to do the crosshair. We're going to look uh, in this area, basically. So we're searching that part of the screen. I recommend not searching your entire screen because that can be process heavy. Uh, just searching that one spot is also going to be faster because you're not searching your entire screen. You're just looking in that one spot. All right, so this right here is a just a demo image. The flower thing doesn't really matter. It's all about these radio buttons. So what's going to happen basically is um, when it does find the image, it's going to get coordinates in case you need to maybe click in that area, which is most likely what you're doing. So this is just saying where do you want to get the coordinates for. You can get the uh, center of the image. You can get the top uh left it actually i didn't even know this but when you hover over it actually tells you the name of it um, we're just going to keep it simple with the middle because that's probably what you want accuracy uh that could be useful for video games just because maybe you know there's shading and stuff so if you're looking for an image and it's nighttime in your game versus daytime that can actually matter uh, in your game so that's something to play around with i can't tell you the answer of what to set it to you're just going to have to play with that uh, we're going to go ahead and push OK. And as simple as that. So, if I push F2 right now, as you see, nothing's happening. F2, F2, F2. It's because it's trying to search for the entire image. But the entire image is currently being hidden. So we're going to bring that to the front. And we're going to go ahead and press F2. Oh, you should probably save it. That would make a lot of sense. So there you go. It's finding the image, as you can see. So yeah, let's bring that to the front. F2. Found it. F2. I found it. Let's minimize this. F2 again. Oh, you know what we're having issues here for? It's because I have this up here. So let's go ahead and delete this. Uh, delete macro, yes. Okay, let's try that again. F2. Found it. F2. Found it. Let's minimize this. F2. Hey, nothing happened. F2. 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 Bring it back. F2. I found it. Boom. It's as simple as that. I had a little issue there at the beginning just because I had two macros that were using the same hot hotkey by accident. So, hey, I'm glad that popped up in uh, that because then you got to see uh, don't use the same hotkey for two unless you really want to. All right, so that is image detection. Very simple, very easy to understand. Let's go ahead and delete that. Now we're going to move on to pixel search. If you don't know what that is, you're basically looking for a pixel that is a color. So let's go ahead and get that, which will be right here, pixel search. This is alphabetized uh, also, just so you know. Uh, add. We're going to get this nice little pop-up here. I'm going to bring this back up, but I have to move it off the screen just for a second. Um, so yeah, once again, you got some options here. You can do pixel location, application, or area. Pixel location, I mean, that's going to be the fastest, but you're only looking in one small spot. So if you move that window even slightly, this is not going to work application if you just wanted to search within that specific window which is probably actually a really good one for gaming um, but i usually like area because even within the game usually i'm searching in just one section of the screen this is going to be the probably by far the best once again enter it manually if you want i don't think anybody's really going to be doing that but uh yeah i mean to each his own i guess um, so yeah, we're going to search, once again, we'll just search this whole area right here. You can't really see where I'm highlighting. It doesn't show up when I'm, doesn't show up when I'm recording, but I just highlighted a small section, uh, 
kind of just over there in the corner. Uh, now we need to get the color. So you can use this, you know, like Windows style paint looking thing. I don't recommend this because even though this orange looks pretty close to that, I mean, th there's so many shades of orange that it could be, I mean, you can change the accuracy, but let's try to get as close to 100% accuracy as we can. So I'm going to use this capture. So you click that. Up here it has instructions in the title bar. Uh, Z, location, and that's on your keyboard, obviously. X, color, C, both. I want to do color. So I'm going to uh, hover my mouse over what color I'm looking for. So we're just going to look for this orange. I'm going to go ahead and push X. And as you see right there, it captured exactly that shade or whatever. Uh, hex color, all that. Uh, method, you know, just... Honestly, it's up to you. You play around, but it's not going to make a huge difference, most likely. Once again, accuracy, we can always turn that down a bit, just because maybe there's nighttime or daytime in the program. It can affect this shade of orange, because if it's nighttime, obviously this orange in the game is probably going to be a little bit darker. So once again, can't tell you the answer. This is just something you're going to have to play with. Obviously, if you put it at uh, 1%, you're going to get a lot of false uh, hits on that. So basically at 1%, anything that's even remotely orange is probably going to trigger. So yeah, I'll push OK. There we go. We're keeping our uh, trigger and our actions the same. We're going to go ahead and push Save. We're going to push F2. And it says I found it, because as you can see right there, it's a little bit in there. But let's bring that actually to the front. Found it. Found it. Let's get rid of that. Now we're going to push F2 again. Nothing's happening. Well, that's because there's no orange in this little area right here. Bring it back. F2. I found it. So it's just crazy how smooth this is in this program. Uh, not trying to say anything about, uh, you know, manually coding uh, this or using pullovers, but, like, just how smooth it is in this is pretty powerful and probably by far the best I've seen so far. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, let's uh, let it do OCR. Let me find an image here real quick. Let me go into some random meme stuff, and uh, yeah, we'll use this cute little kitty. So as you see, this is an image. I'm trying to highlight the text. Well, I can't, because it's an image. There's no actual text there. Even though I can see it, the computer can't see it. So we're going to capture this text. So... Let's go back into our macro. We're going to delete our pixel search. We're going to push the plus symbol. And we're looking for OCR. Where is that our OCR? Right here. Once again, alphabetical order. Click that. Push add. And here's our new menu that we're going to play with. So once again, you can do file. Maybe you don't even want to open the image. You just, you know the file's there. You know what it's called. You know where it's at. You know. You can just use this to capture it. You don't even have to open it. But we like visuals in this uh, video, so we are not going to be doing that. We are going to be doing area. So, let's go ahead and capture that. Um, so yeah, we'll highlight, we'll highlight that little area. Once again, I don't think that you can see it when I do that. Um, and so it's going to capture there. Um, language is English. Uh, there are options, but that depends on your computer. I only have English installed on my computer, so that's the only one that's showing. Uh, scale factor. Basically, that means it's blowing the image up or shrinking it. Um, that's, once again, the person who created this said that he found uh, three to be the most efficient uh, in his experience. Um, once again, that's just something you all are going to have to play with if you're having issues with it. Maybe the image is really big and it's getting blurry. You might want to scale it down. Or maybe the image, uh, for some odd reason, is super small and you need to blow it up before you do the actual reading of the OCR. You can do that. So pretty much that's it. We're going to go ahead and we'll come back to runtime in a minute. That's by far my favorite, but let's start with area because that's probably the one you guys are going to be using a lot. Uh, we're going to push OK. We're going to save. We are going to bring our image up. Oh no, we lost our image. Eh, it doesn't really matter. Um, oh, sorry. So we do need to change our message box. 
So as you saw here, OCR text will be stored in the global variable OCR result. So we need to display the variable versus just I found it. So we're going to do it's uh, in this program, it's dollar sign. And then in curly brackets, you put whatever it's called. So it's RC OCR result and then close it in curly brackets. This will display our text. Once again, you can choose, you know, whatever. All right, save. We're going to go ahead and jump back to our image. F2, F2. Why is it not triggering? F2 down, OCR, area. Oh. Uh, it's just being a little slow. Okay. Whoopsie. Try that again. Now OCR is obviously pretty powerful. Uh, it can take a little bit of a second, uh, depending like it did there. Um, so I can has your auto hotkey. So there it goes. It grabbed where uh, I highlight it. So there we go. We got it. Now, my favorite, but, you know, it's you situation, is runtime. Runtime basically means maybe my image is moving on different parts of the screen, or I'm going to be using it for multiple tasks, not the same thing every single time. I don't want to use area, meaning I have to have that image or that text in that same spot every single time. Runtime is going to fix that. So we're going to go ahead, push OK, bring our image back to the front. Sure, we'll use a different one. We're going to push F2. And I don't know if you can see this. Once again, I don't think you could see that because um, it goes into um, area mode. So that way I can change the area every single time I push F2 versus having to go into the macro and change in it. And uh, yeah, so friends, how did you write this code so beautifully? Me, proudly. So it captured it. But I can change the location every single time. You know, I want to move it up here now. I'm going to push F2. Highlight the top part there. Boom, it caught it. So that's uh, what runtime is. Is basically it just lets you change the area every single time that hotkey is triggered. Where area is always going to be the same. So once again, just depends on your use case on what you want to do. Now, if you're interested in this program and you don't have it already, this is the first time you're seeing this on my channel, definitely check the description below. I have the link down there uh, to the website. Also, just so you know, this is actually on Steam now as of uh, i think like a month ago or something as the time of recording this video so it is on there that's a great place too to also go and see what people are saying to get help ideas uh, there is a community center here if uh, you're struggling with all the different commands there's like some stuff that users have uploaded so please upload stuff you know for other people to use it'll help them out and uh something cool just to throw out there i've never seen a program like this um, in Steam have achievements. It actually has achievements and a decent amount of them and some of them are very random, some are harder, some are easier. Uh, just depends what you're doing, but I just thought that was kind of fun. It forces you to kind of want to explore a little bit more just to get those achievements. You know, there's a few things I didn't even know you could do on here that I learned just because there was an achievement. Like, I didn't know, uh, you could hide, you know, your macro from, um, the log or something. Um, so that was kind of cool to learn just because there was an achievement. So why not? All right, everybody, if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments below and I will see you all on the next one. Mm -hmm.